They're back for more! Okay, that was cliche, and so is the movie. But you know what? It's good schlocky fun. It takes place in the same town from the first film, Grover's Bend, two years later on Easter. One of the townspeople, a stereotypical bully wearing a leather jacket, comes across a bunch of eggs and tries to sell them to a local antique dealer, Quigley, who has some of the best lines in the movie. These things ain't worth dick. Well, I hate teenagers. Quigley turns around and sells the eggs to a little old lady, who plans on using them for the town's annual Easter egg hunt. It's not a bad little setup, and it's interesting how the film is set on Easter. I don't know too many movies that capitalize on Easter, and given that this movie starts out with the critter eggs, it seems like the perfect fit. The two bounty hunters from the first film, Ugg and Lee, get news that there are still Krites, or critters, back on Earth, and return with a third bounty hunter, Charlie, the annoying alcoholic from the first movie. In the first film, Charlie was the cliché town drunk who somehow knows the threat is on its way, but because he's an alcoholic, no one believes him. He was annoying, the movie treated him like he was mentally challenged, and he had no purpose. He was a throwaway character used to extend the film's runtime, the same as the bounty hunters. Since then, Ugg and Lee took Charlie with them, and for the past two years, he's been learning the ropes. They get back to Earth, and for some reason, Lee, much like in the first movie, can't pick a suitable body. This is one of the major distractions in this film, although the comedy works a little better here. First, he comes across a Playboy magazine and transforms into the topless model displayed on the page. It's done for pointless nudity, but it's also funny. She's a nude chick just walking around an empty field. The next time Lee transforms, he picks this nerdy kid, played by Eddie Deason, who also played a nerd in Greece. And the last time he morphs, he's about to transform into, get this, Freddy Krueger. I was confused by this at first until I remembered that this was a New Line Cinema film. I guess they couldn't get a hold of Robert England, but if they got Freddy to walk around this movie while blowing away critters, that would have been the best thing ever. Instead, Charlie puts the Playboy magazine back in his face and he's forced to transform back into the Playboy model. I don't get it. Why? It's not like they'd have to worry about copyright infringement. Anyway, Charlie isn't as annoying in this film. His character has a little bit of heart, and he touches upon his being an outsider on Earth and how he'd rather hang out with Ugg and Lee in space. He doesn't do much but stumble around, but they do give him a little payoff during the climax. Now for the main attractions, the Critters. They pretty much have the same characteristics as the first film. There's nothing new here. They simply roll around and eat everything in sight. I liked how a lot of this movie takes place during the day. The creatures are black, so it was really hard to see them in the first movie. Here we see a little more of them. Not as much as I would have liked, but they have a few standout scenes, like this scene at the diner. This, more than the first movie, really ripped off of Gremlins. They have the same kind of personalities, they travel as a group, and in order to finish them off, the townspeople come up with a plan to trap them in one place and blow them up. It has Gremlins written all over it. I don't care who denies it, it's Gremlins with critters. But in a twist ending, the critters escape the explosion and morph into this giant critter ball that mows down everybody. It's a cheesy little ending, but it gives us more critters, so hey, I'm for it. For the most part, the critter ball looks flat, like a giant furry soccer ball, although there are a couple of close-up shots where we see them hunched together and chomping away. The best part about this movie is the dialogue. Given we don't see the critters for the first half of the movie, the characters have plenty of funny things to say to tide us over. Shit. Easter sucks. Where on earth did you get these, Len? They're from Europe. Oh, this is great. The Easter bunny with his Tehachapi hanging out. That's unusual for a little schlocky B-movie, but this one pulls it off, making it that much more enjoyable than the original. After seeing the first one and given the proven trend of horror sequels, I was nervous to continue watching the series, as the first film is usually the best, setting the tone for the rest of the series to follow. And in most cases, the quality just goes downhill. With this one, it seems like the filmmakers understood that there were a few missed opportunities with the original and made up for it with a really entertaining, tongue-in-cheek sequel. I give this one a three naked Playboy bunnies.